there's still this massive problem. Yeah? So we've got to be able to talk about it, talk about it openly, explore it openly. Okay? I'm not saying every Muslim's doing this. I'm not saying it's exclusively all Muslims. Okay? What I'm saying is there's a massive crime, there's a massive overrepresentation. We need to understand why. Anything we can understand that can deter, limit, or stop the numbers of young girls that are being prostituted, pimped in our towns and cities, we need to explore and look at. And in Telford, Telford has a 1.7% Muslim population. Yeah? This is Telford. The police investigation in that town identified 1,000 victims that were used. In the police investigation, they identified over 250 Muslims. Yeah, in the town. Okay, when you take the demographic of Mus uh, of Muslims in Telford, one point seven percent. You take away the over uh, under sixteens and the over sixties. You take away the women. Yeah, there's only like twelve hundred Muslim men. There's only twelve hundred Muslim men, and you've got two hundred and fifty of them identified by the police. Another, another, another. Um, an, an independent inquiry identified three hundred and fifty. We sat down with one girl, and we identified. We got two hundred and three names of men who had raped her in that town. Yeah. Then you're talking like nearly 20% of the men, 20% of the Muslim men in Telford were involved in prostituting and raping children. Five women are dead, including children, in that town. This is just one small town called Telford with 3,500 Muslims in it. Yeah? This is a massive problem. Now, I looked at that. I looked in that city and what I've done is I interviewed 12, I spent time with 12 girls. I spent about 18 months with them. Got to know them, gained their trust, um, listened to their stories and done a real in-depth investigation into what's been happening in Telford. We found police corruption. Police were working with the gangs. We, um, we identified, as I said, we identified upwards of 250 men involved. And what I'd done is each time the girls named the men, we dissected it all. And then we pieced it together. So once the name men were named by more than three, by, by three girls, yeah. So we've got three girls who don't know each other naming the same men, prostituting, grooming them, raping them. Now, the police investigation, as I said, identified over 200. They prosecuted 10. You prosecuted 10. You've got over 200 men who rape girls in this town and you charge 10. You're, talk you're not talking about l l small crimes here. You're talking about, when I say I spent time with these girls, their lives are destroyed. Their families are destroyed. We're, tw we're 15, 20 years on and some of the victims, they're still suicidal and trying to kill themselves. They're still hooked on drugs. They're still depressed. They're still suffering. Yeah? The men swanning around in sports cars, running businesses, all of them running businesses, successful businesses in the town. In, in the groups we identified, we, we had the leader in the mosque, the leader of the Muslim Council of Telford was one of the main men identified by three people. Yeah? So we showed all of this in, in an investigation. And then we explored, we asked the girls, what were they called? Was there any mention of, and they're all called Gura, they're all called Dirty Gura, white girl. It was all racial. There was many religious comments made. So just exploring it, I, and, and it was probably, I'd say, out of everything I've done, the most difficult, it fried my head. It, 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 I, I don't know, I, I think anyone who deals with sexual abuse victims or anyone who spends time in looking into these cases or understanding these cases needs a, re a massive reward because the things that they take on themselves by, uh, by listening and, and, and going through the crimes, it's horrific what has happened to these girls. And no one's faced, these men are still running around Telford now. Yeah? We've produced documentaries of multiple victims, naming them, Given, given their stories of what they've done to them, they're all still running around Telford. Do you think you've got anywhere with it, Tommy, over the last five years, like doing what you're doing, or has it just become so draining in your life that you think, what's the point? Uh, no, I totally, I totally don't. I know we've got somewhere with it. Everyone now knows the word group. They call it grooming gang, don't they? The grooming, like a nice little polite word for it. It's called love jihad in India. It's called lover boy in Holland. What we're talking about is predatory gangs of men beating, prostituting and destroying children yeah, and enjoying doing it. And it's not about their sexual gratification when you go through what they're doing to them. When you go through what they're doing to them, they, we, we had one girl, we, we had one girl who gives us the interview who the man drags her out of the car, he drags her up to the woods, he makes her, he sticks his cock in her mouth and then afterwards he urinates all over her. He stands and pisses all over her. That same man then murders a girl yeah, so what's he spend in jail? Two years. Uh, two years he spends in jail, and now he's running a restaurant. I just had a woman, Sarah Sands, on who 
killed her son's abusers three and a half years she got to double her they sentence doubled it. I've, doubled seen, I've seen it they doubled it yeah. she she went round to his house he's a pedophile living on the for estate for 40 years he's been doing it he's been for 40 years he's been yeah. I, I, I remember that case is a couple of years old yeah 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 I read it at the time mm -hmm. What a hero she is. Yeah, amazing. She should be healed as a hero. She's she should be. So she is a hero. Kids, yeah. but has she had support? Not yet. She's kind of still dealing with this. So she, has she had support either, not just for herself, for her children, but what I mean is she's left broken yeah. when, when she was away from her. So she's been taken from her children. She was taken from her children. For because, yeah, because the court system gave that man bail over nearly 30 crimes he'd done and they gave him bail and she was more worried that he would go and do more stuff to her kids so she took it into her own hands went to see him for him to admit his guilt he said your son's a lion she gave him it eight times and then she got three and a half years which is not too bad but no it is bad it is, no, that's a, the double descent no no, no 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 because whose fault is it it's the judge's fault to give him yeah. bail he's a prolific offender with a history of offending right when I looked at him he's a prof I've looked at it I remember looking at it He's a prolific offender, and this is like all these men. Why are they on bail? They're given bail. They all get, they're all just disappearing. And it's not like, as I said, it's not like, in our cases, it's not like, there's not like one girl. You've got a thousand girls. Yeah? You've got a thousand girls in Telford that you've identified that have been raped, and you prosecuted 10 men out of 200. So what basically what they do, it, what they've done to this country, the police, and People have been rewarded. When you look into this, yeah? So like Manchester, there's a police officer in charge in Manchester. Ident they identified 100 girls after a 15-year-old girl was murdered there, yeah? They identified 100 girls. They identified all the men that were involved. I think this is what Maggie Oliver might have resigned over anyway. That they, they, ident they identified all the men involved. They, were, they bring their prosecution, they arrest them all, yeah? And then they ditch the whole case. Three months after they ditched the whole case, that head police officer that ditched it receives the highest reward from our, from our royal family. Yeah, receives the highest reward. For our, they're rewarded for cut this. If it was happening in one town, there was a cover up. Yeah, you say, okay, one one police local council has covered it up. When it's happened in every town and city across the country, and it's all been stemmed and covered up for decades, yeah, that is a conspiracy. Okay, who's behind the conspiracy? Everyone knew it was going on. Everyone's known it's going on. So when you say, oh, have we got anywhere? Yeah, people now know about it. But what they've done is they just make token arrests. So in mm -hmm. Telford, they arrest ten. You know, you know, 200, there's another 190 that you know of raped kids and they're still walking around the town. And that's why we focus into, I focus my documentary in Telford and my last episode is on the council. We're going to go for the council. Yeah. And the, we're going to go for the council because the council, these are all white men, 10 straight white, 10 white men who work for Telford council all wrote to Amber. So when, when this was breaking in Telford, yeah, and it was bubbling in Telford, there was calls for an independent inquiry. These 10 men, wrote a letter to the Amber, 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 her, Amber Rudd, what was her name? The Home Secretary. They wrote to the Home Secretary. They, so, they all signed it, uh, to ask them not to do an independent inquiry. One of these men's jobs is in charge of child services. They're all, so this cover-up, this was a Labour cover-up in Telford, um, because they've all got things to lose, because they've all let it happen. They've all known it's happening. And then they've all been rewarded all through their careers. Anyone who's, anyone, when you look at all the different cities, when we look at, Ro I looked at uh, Rochdale, Rotherham, one of them just got the place to be, be the MP, didn't he? They put him up for the MP. They've had to reverse it because the outcry. But they've all been rewarded for covering it up. What makes the changes then to protect kids? For me, I've always said it, bring back hanging. Like, if you harm my kid, you should be dead. Like, in America, I know they, they castrate people who harm kids, I think, in Russia. You're not allowed to leave the country. Um, you get life sentences. But here you can change your name for less than 20 quid. You can change your well, identity. You can now, thanks to Nicholas Sturgeon. Yeah, yeah you can, <laughs> unbelievable. You can change the passport details. That Because a lot of these people who have, like that old man Sarah killed, he changed his name numerous occasions. I had Della Wright on, who was abused at six years old. The kid, that kid who was, had already had previous, was taking him, taking Sarah to um, to see the parole officer. She was sitting outside that. Like, changed his name, changed his identity. That like, Why is the law so lenient here? And why does it seem as if nobody cares about kids? Because the hierarchy don't care about kids. That's very established. That's very, the elite, the, cab the cabal, whatever you want to call it, whatever name, the matrix, which has become a, fa a famous name for it all now. Um, they actually do not care about kids. There's, there's global elitist paedophile rings. There is sacrificing of children, which people fit, would have thought sounded mad. You've seen the whole Balenciaga story that blew up, right? Mm -hmm. Literally child pornographic, por pornographic pictures of children in a major brand's main advertisement, all hidden, 
all the codes hidden, the bow, you see, they spelt, spent the word wrong on the, you know, on there, they had the, um, the reel of tape on the table of their Balenciaga advert. And instead of saying Balenciaga, it had B-A-A-L. Now, bow was the god of child sacrifice. It's all straight in your face, yeah? And it all goes all the way to the top. 